lot of these channels are just horrific to go through. It's so difficult to watch, especially the meat markets for dogs. It's just brutal because dogs just look at you like, what are you doing to me? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? I was a good boy. What happened? And they just look at you like, why do humans do this? And um, it's brutal. It's just absolutely brutal. But you know what's more brutal is you have advertisements on these videos. And now this particular video may be a legitimate rescue. So I'm not trying to say that this Paul of channel is doing something wrong. I haven't looked into it. It takes a lot of effort to look at these channels and it affects you. It definitely affects you. It makes you think that humans are just monsters you know just the worst creatures on earth are usually humans but at the same time there are good people and you have to have some faith in humanity otherwise life is just one long slog but this is irritating because advertisements show up on channels that are fake rescue channels and i want to quickly just say the reason why this happens is because youtube a few years ago said you don't have to have partner status to have advertisements put on your channel. You as a content creator won't make any money, but YouTube will. And people who are advertising with YouTube, corporations that are advertising with YouTube, don't have a verified partner status situation going on, where in the past, YouTube would advertise on partner channels primarily, channels that had verified who they were, and now there was always an exception. There was always the ability to advertise on YouTube channels without having partner status. But for the most part, the partner channel system was a way to vet people. And they got rid of that a few years ago and just said, hey, you know what? We're losing out on a lot of money and we should be able to put ads on all the videos that are on our platform. And so somebody in corporate said, that's how we're going to make, you know, our stockholders, our shareholders happy. And they did it. And as a result, there are videos that are awful that receive advertisements. Now, I've seen every advertisement in the world on some of these that are actually fake channels. So it's difficult to say, well, YouTube's not profiting from animal abuse when in fact they are. It's hard to say that corporations aren't supporting animal abuse because their ads are showing up on these videos, which is making YouTube as a platform money. And this is the problem when you decided that you were just going to monetize everything on your platform because you have the right to do that. You're a private company. You can do whatever you want. And as a result, people should be able to call you out and say, hey, you're not vetting these videos very well. And this is the dilemma. I'm going to keep this video very short. The problem with this whole concept is you've done something where advertisers can pay for an ad on a video that is completely uh, forbidden to be on your platform because you don't have the moderation to stop it. Why would you go to a advertising model? Of course, it's the answer is greed, but why would you go to an advertising model where there's advertisements on every single video when you don't have the ability to moderate that content effectively? The platform went through the adpocalypse a few years ago. And then their answer was, well, we're just going to run ads on everything now. It's almost like saying, I don't give a crap if we had Ford advertisements on a neo-Nazi on a neo-Nazi channel, because you act like you cared. You act like you care about protecting the kids, right? By making people verify the COPPA stuff. But then at the same time, you're like, we're just going to run ads on everything. So it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like, you see your house is on fire, so you're going to decide to put out the fire with gasoline. And that's essentially what they've done with this situation. A lot of these channels like KB Longshed, uh, Logshen or whatever his this person's channel's name is, they do fake animal rescues. And like I said, some of these channels will migrate to real animal rescues at some point to kind of clean up their act and they'll purge their channel of the stuff that got them in trouble. Most of these channels know that if they put up 10 different channels, one of them's going to make it and one of them will turn into a legitimate channel. There are legitimate channels on YouTube. Now they're legitimate that started off being these animal cruelty, fake rescue channels. 
And that's what the, that's what the lottery is. The lottery is you put up a bunch of heinous content and at some point you'll get enough viewers and subscribers who think it's true. And then at the end, you just change it so that your content is legitimate. And then people say, oh, wow, what a great rescue channel. But you started, you founded your channel off of animal abuse and YouTube profited from it and corporate sponsors helped monetize it. So yeah. Animal abuse is monetized, advertised, and profitable, and everyone's involved with it. I mean, even the viewers are involved with it because as viewers, we we don't if we don't know any better, we like it, we subscribe to it, and that encourages it to continue. So it's everybody. Everybody shares a blame in animal abuse. The viewers, the platform, the advertisers, and of course, the animal abusers themselves, aka content creators. And it's just pitiful.